So hello everyone, this is How Can I Heal with uh, Krina Okumus, but today things are a bit different. The guest is Krina herself, and I have the pleasure to interview you, Krina. Um, we switch sides basically, so my name is Leah, and this, is, this episode is only about you about the host of how can i heal so it's all about you today how does that make you feel karina you know i'm i mean leah you know me so well you are such a dear friend and thank you first of all so much for taking time and being open of interviewing me and this it was one of our discussion because you are uh, my coach um physical coach but as, as well the me mental part that we are working together and we were speaking how important it is even to be out and to speak and to tell my story. So everything is kind of in the flow in this moment and uh, it's really the right moment to, to do that. I don't like to be in the center uh, in general, but um, I know that I have to do that because I have to really share with uh, the ones that they are listening and I have to be on this chair to be vulnerable as most of my guests are, <laughs> to be fair. Yes, and it's my pleasure to be able to be the one that asks you the question. So thank you for having me. And I think it's really brave of you to switch sides. So you, now you will even understand your guests better how they feel when you are um, asking them all those questions. <laughs> totally. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's very much about transparency. And we have to really mention that we already had record. We already recorded once this. True. It, the Yesterday, the quality was terrible from my side, and um, you were very open and nice to um, to record again. And we try to really forget what we discussed yesterday, and I'm sure that everything will go in a very natural way. But um, it's so much about self love again. You know, it's like I wanted to. I felt so bad to ask you again, and the quality and everything. But I'm very grateful that you understood, and of I'm very course. grateful that. I reacted much better with myself too. So. so there there was already again, or as you had many on this healing journey, a, a lesson learned. Totally. It is. So speaking about the podcast, um, I know that you started it over a year ago. There are over 30 episodes that you already recorded. So you've been super productive. And um, I would like to ask you to take it from the beginning. So why did you actually start the podcast? It's a very beautiful story. Um, everything started during the lockdown when um, um, I realized that I really have to dedicate together with a bunch of my close friends um, to do something and support us and support um, people around us. Um, and we, um, this bunch of friends, believe in the power of togetherness. So we um, created a nonprofit that we could offer um, every day between 10 to half an hour meditation. Every day we had a new teacher, volunteer, and um, it was so beautiful to really feel these emotions and to really feel this power of togetherness because at the end of the day, and I think especially during this time, we realize even more, we are so connected, even if we are not physically connected. Sometimes we are so connected with each other. And um, one of my responsibility during this project which is called Omnis.life. And in one month, we had more than 3,000 people joining oh, from wow. all over the world. It was, it, it was so impressive. beautiful. And Leah, I have to tell you, the messages that we received from uh, people that they were in the hospitals in Italy, and you know, Italy was quite um, mm. in a very special situation. Um, that they were listening and they were part of the meditation and they wrote us how much it really helped them to um, doctors from San Francisco um, hospital that they took their lunch break in Pacific time it was lunch um, to really be there and I was all the time in tears because I really really felt that power of togetherness so I was uh, part of my mission was to really have every day a new um, a new teacher everything was live and um, 
I was really lucky to meet so many and I all the time wanted to have all my dream teachers um, <laughs> that they could really guide there. And one of it, um, Sebastian Siegel, he is a known um, actor, movie producer, but as well an impressive uh, meditation teacher. And I um, spoke with him and I asked him to, to join that. Unfortunately, during his time frame, it was really not possible. But he told me, listen, I can give you an interview if you want. I was like, okay, great. When do you have time? Ah, oh, just give me, uh, just in some specific time, uh, give me some um, some dates, and um, we, uh, I can do, I can do that for an hour. I didn't have anything planned. I just organized. I tried to read. I looked to YouTube how to do it. I was investing a little bit in some uh, a little mic, and I just did it. And I remember it was really late. Um, I was super nervous because he's such a wise person. And I was like, oh my God, what I will do? I will it, I will be terrible. Like I was like, oh my God, what I'm doing? But I just felt I have to do it. And I loved it so much, Lea. After that, I don't know, I think I finished the interview at um, 11 p.m. And I was full of energy. And I was like, oh my God, what's happening? I really love it. And um, then I started to think very serious about it. And I started to realize, okay, where can I do it? How can I do it? And the reality is that I all the time was fascinated by the story of people. Every time when I was meeting someone and really like, if you see me um, everywhere, I just ending up with the, hearing the story of someone from, um, I just recently uh, met an amazing lady from um, South Africa that she sells um, in, um, uh, she sells exotic fruits in Birkiplatz market. And she started to tell me all her life and how she's dealing as an entrepreneur and how she's doing it. We ended up hugging and all these beautiful stories of people. So I really use that as a, obviously a healing tool for myself. Um, but as well of learning the stories of uh, different people that um, I admire. Yeah, that's actually something I wanted to ask you. So by kind of accident or by chance, you started um, interviewing this one person and one person led to the other. I mean, it could have been any topic. It could have been about meditation. It could have been about, I don't know, the personality themselves or any mm -hmm. kind of topic. Why totally. did you... Why did you choose healing as a topic? Because it's part of my journey. And because um, um, in the last years, um, I uh, one of the things that I really focus on is the importance of knowing who you are and what do you want to do. And uh, this it was, uh, and it is my journey. It's my healing journey. And um, first of all, it's something that I want to learn. And I realized during this project that there are many more that they are in their own healing journey. And um, we can do this together. We can heal together. And healing, it's such a broad topic. topic. Can be healing through food, can be healing through meditation, can be healing through nature, can be healing to, through um, mindfulness, can be so much relationship, can be it's such a broad topic. and. Uh, even the title, I have to say, I was really meditated um, one one day, and um, actually I was really asking for guidance, honestly. And uh, it was so funny because it just came the title, "How can I heal?" And uh, my husband said, "But you really have to check if it's really correct from the English point of view. Maybe you should do how do I heal or whatever." And I said, "No, no, no. <laughs> This is what I have to do. And it's so important to know who you are and what do you want." And don't be influenced even by the loved ones when you are going there deep and you know it. So I just felt this is how I have to do. And um, I'm really happy I did that. We are also happy you did that because you gave <laughs> us so many interesting uh, episodes and so many Thank interesting you. and inspiring people also that we learned about as your listeners. Um, you mentioned the questions that you had, uh, who are you, um, what is your purpose, those kind of questions. Um, I would say that maybe started off your healing journey. So far in your healing journey, what's the biggest lesson that you have learned? I think one, as I mentioned before, is the importance of knowing who you are 
and um, back in time I was um, I was really um, consider myself like the strong lady that I have to manage and save everyone from the family to my friends I was really responsible I felt responsible of um, everyone um, but um, I didn't realize that uh, I have to focus on myself and of who I am and what I should do. So I think this is one of it. And um, another one very, very important that they are going together, and I cannot just not mention it, is letting go of things. It's such an important one. Again, I just had to really let go and understand that sometimes things has to happen as has to happen and um, just let go. So what are you healing from? <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a very, I, I, uh, yeah, I already start to be, I feel a little bit like a nervous, my body just thinking about it. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm, and I really want to be super open and super, super vulnerable and super authentic to really sharing this, but obviously it's a very, um, touching and uh, sensitive topic in my life so very life, personal yeah. very personal as well um so my life it's kind of before and after one event um seven years ago i was really in that moment when i thought that i have everything i thought that it's i'm in the perfect time i was uh, working for my uh, fashion brand um, i was a successful entrepreneur selling in more than 40 countries um, highly profitable, um, working with designers. It was really like a dream. Um, I was married with, uh, and I'm married with an amazing, amazing man and having already during that time an amazing girl. Um, but I was really running, just running and not being so present. Um, and, and until one day when I woke up in the morning, just ready to start a normal day, as everything it starts kind of like that and uh, that normal day was not normal anymore because that day really changed my um, my day my, my, my whole life I receive a call and um, I find out that my father was um, had a car accident and he passed away my sister was driving my little sister was driving and um, basically my father was one of the most important person in my life he gave up of his job um, to support me to make my dream come true. So we were business partners as well. And uh, we spoke like five to six, I don't know, many times per day about from spiritual point of view until business, everything. It was just, uh, yeah, he was there all the time. And um, then my healing journey started when I really realized, I, I started to question myself, who am I, what I'm doing? What I'm doing is really, I'm really happy. And I started this journey, I moved to San Francisco uh, where you have all everything. You can find all this, the whole spiritual journey. Can You can you can be really lucky to do that. And But obviously I was searching outside so much. And um, I learned in time that actually you have to, to look inside and you have all, all the resources actually there. Um, and yeah, this it was, uh, how my, my my healing journey started. And I know that um, that moment when I received that call, it's really the most difficult moment in my life, but as well is the most beautiful moment in my life uh, because make me to, um, to be who am I today. And unfortunately, some of us, we learn in a tough way, some things and um, I uh, probably will not even have time now to speak with you if I was an uh, old Krina because I was just running in a hamster wheel doing whatever things um, that now completely change some parts of my values. So um, your father really uh, is or was the most important or one of the most important people in your life, as you said. And um, I wonder if you would like to talk to us, um, to me and your listeners, a bit about your childhood. Were you always close with your father? Mm -hmm. So I'm Romanian. I was born in Bucharest. Um, during that time, um, we were in, during the communistic time. 
so everything was really gray and I remember there were days when we didn't have what to eat or we had bana green bananas waiting for um, becoming yellow which was probably one of the most exotic part and uh, I remember my father and my mother um, going to the revolution just they just drop us to my uh, grandparents and they were just going there to really fight for our freedom for their kids freedom and uh, one of their best friend has been shot in the head just they were like side by side um, and they were really fighting for that and um, I am super grateful for being part of this country uh, because really learned me so much and I will definitely not change anything and I really love it and um, uh, but it was um, definitely it was uh, you know we didn't have the freedom of traveling we didn't have um, the freedom of even buying food what we wanted to buy because you couldn't find it and I had a very um, close relation with both parents but my mom she was working um, a lot she had three jobs she was the the power woman she's a power woman um, and my father is the hippie the hippie part where he realized that someone the kids need some help so he was much more present in, in my life somehow every some 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 of some member of the family had to sacrifice to to make make it happen and um yeah i'm super i'm super happy um for for everything that happened and um at the end of the day it really teach me to appreciate what i have and um Sometimes, you know, there are people that they don't have so much and I was there too. And um, uh, for me, it's a good exercise to go back there and to not, never, remember, never forget about that topic, that part. So how do you think your childhood or how did it shape you? I mean, I hear like your mother was a powerhouse or is a powerhouse, a power woman. I, I know that you are <laughs> like that too. <laughs> and your father is more spiritual, we learned so far, or was more spiritual. Yeah. So you got that side too. Mm -hmm. So, and the upbringing maybe in Romania, how did that shape you? I mean, at the end, it's a perfect, it's a perfect mix somehow <laughs> um, that I had both. Obviously, I really, really missed um, my time with my mother and this it was a journey that I'm healing because I all the time really took it as um, uh, finding excuses that she's not there for me in important moments because she's working and I have to super appreciate and being grateful for that but the reality is that the little Krina she didn't have her mom so present in her life so this is a very interesting topic that I'm really working continuously working on it um, but I think it's, it's, it's happened as it happened and uh, everything it's happened because we have to evaluate and uh, I'm super grateful. And I think it's a good mix uh, of it. I will not change it. I will not change it. So you're saying everything happens for a reason. You wouldn't want to change um, the way you've been brought up, the way your life went so far. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing you would change if you could. Oh, I mean, obviously, I would love to change that time. I think, um, obviously, I would love to change that time when my father was uh, what, what, uh, died in a car accident. But um, I know that uh, some things in life, in life has to happen that on that time. Um, and it's really not depending on us. Um, but I would love to um, spend more time with the, the loved ones during that, that that moment because I was, like I mentioned, I was really running as a hamster in a hamster wheel, not realizing what is really important in my life, and um, to be more present, to really just be there and listen to the people, and um, um, having even much more beautiful topics about spirituality with my father because I already did it since. Oh, long time ago we were meditating together and uh, yeah I would love to really just be more present the good thing is you do have the chance to be more present in the now um, do you feel that's something you have accomplished in this moment yes to just like let's say if you look back on the last year or uh, just like a shorter time frame do you think you are more present uh, 
Oh, you're no, still I, running. I don't know. Um, I have moments when I'm running um, and definitely meditation. It's uh, one of the tools, um, yoga as well, that really helps me to uh, go back to that good reminder. I really think that it's a continuously learning. And I really think that you cannot say now, obviously I, I love and I think I'm evaluating every single day. And this is part of uh, one of my, uh, my biggest um, goals in this life to evaluate i'm a super curious person and i want to learn about so many different topics so i really um hope so <laughs> i don't want to um um speak with my ego because he will jump very fast and he will make <laughs> you a big list about uh, what he's proud of but um i really think that um i learned to have tools that helps me to really um, be in the now. And meditation is one of it. Um, yoga, being in the nature. Um, there are just a few that, um, yeah, helps me to do that. Obviously, I have days when I am uh, running and I'm like, okay, yeah, going so back. To, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, you mentioned that you're very curious, and I think that also shows in, in your interviews um, and the wide topic of the interviews. So going yeah. back to your guests, I, I mean, you had 30 guests, all great, all had very interesting point of views. We as listeners learned from every single guest, at least something. Um, I know it's difficult, but they had so many great messages and helpful messages and i wonder like which one or two did really stick with you oh my god this is a really tough one because <laughs> obviously i i mean they are like kind of my babies all these episodes and all these people that i invite um they are really um huge inspiration and i have mm. to mention that uh you are part of it and you <laughs> i interviewed to as i interview you as well and i really love it but let's just don't yes, mention that because everyone will speak. think that <laughs> <laughs> let's speak about others <laughs> okay so let me think about um two of them it's mm -hmm. super super tough because honestly leah after each of these interviews i'm like oh my god this is the best one like really <laughs> i i love them and i have to say some even most of them i really listen because i really i really learned so many things um but if i have to choose two um i will choose uh, emily emily she's um she's an amazing person she's a model and actress uh, based in los angeles and uh, i worked with her before i started that i worked with her when we were both in fashion industry mm. um, and i was looking for the face of my uh, my brand uh, mayochi and um, i saw a beautiful article with her actually it was a picture with her on vogue uh, when she had a huge scarf a big scarf on on her arm and she the way how she showed it uh, it was so beautiful, everything, and I could really understand that it's a story behind. Again, we go back to the story part. And I was like, oh my God, she's perfect. I really want to have her as, as, as the image uh, of it. And I never had courage during the photo shooting to ask her, what is the story? Um, but I really felt super connected with her. And um, I was so really thinking on my uh, wish list to interview her mm -hmm. and actually it was the first time when she was um, sharing her whole experience and it was such a beautiful discussion with so much vulnerability she's really one of the most beautiful person outside obviously I mean if you see her pictures she's really like oh my god so beautiful but she's so beautiful inside she's she's adorable and um i really learned so much and um it was such a beautiful discussion when she started to put me questions during the interview mm -hmm. and we really share so much because the reason that she had that big scar it, it was during a car accident um and the person who drove actually even ran away and all her uh, her journey and at the end of the day we all have um, different scars sometimes you can see them sometimes you cannot see them and um, I was crying during that interview I was laughing with her during that interview and um, uh, I all the time um, this give me so much power to really not hide my scar and to really speak about it after this discussion and another one it's actually with uh, Jesus Jesus 
is um, uh, an amazing person. Um, he was born in Mexico and he was taking care of um, our garden in San Francisco. And I saw him all the time so happy and singing. And I knew it was not, he didn't have an easy life. Um, it was really during the time when uh, Trump has been elected and basically he really was fully shooting um, against uh, the immigrants and um, I all the time saw him happy and all the time really and one day uh, before we started actually the podcast because obviously I was interesting about the stories um, I asked him if he can give me an interview and that was one of the interviews that I would um, edit on my YouTube channel as well to really see it as well and hear it um, it was it's a short, it's the shortest interview that I have, five minutes. Um, but it was, because I, I tried to really squeeze out all the messages, the interview was much longer. Mm -hmm. But what I learned from this guy, and I'm telling you, I think I listened for at least 50 times. Um, oh, wow. And uh, each time I'm learning something. And one of the lessons that I learned from that interview is uh, being grateful for what you have never forget about that and um yeah i really love that yeah i think gratitude is such an amazing value and and, and also to have and it, it helps you appreciate it helps you to center yourself um it's yeah. it's a powerful one and you know sometimes often maybe uh, we some of us we focus on what we don't have Mm -hmm. and uh, it's such a pity because you know at the end of the day we are limited on this planet and we should really do things that we love now and um, focus on what we have appreciate what we have being grateful for what we have and um, instead of focusing on what we don't have and I think this gratitude helps us so much to be in line and um, at the end of the day being happy Mm -hmm. because we have we all have so much no matter in what situation we are in that moment so speaking about gratitude and being grateful um what is a moment maybe a very magical moment that you are grateful for i have to say i'm really lucky to really have many in my life mm -hmm. but if i really had to choose one it's definitely the moment when i um when i beca become a mother and it's continuously until today um it's not that moment it's really the moment <laughs> how beautiful <laughs> this is never ending yes. every single day i'm amazed by by my little girl she's now eight years old her name is julia she has big blue eyes like my father and she's super funny and she's my teacher she's she's all the time helping me so much to be in the present mm, this is like good. the best because she's <laughs> all the time um seeing that and it's so important how we relate to our kids you know like even if you look to the mobile what you eat you want your kid to eat healthy and you eat i don't know uh, whatever <laughs> not so hamburger <laughs> mcdonald's whatever it's not so good um so and she's all the time teaching me to um, different things to to be present to to enjoy life I mean there are so many so many every single day um, I'm learning something from her and can you give I, us an example of, of what like a moment that she taught you something important so for example um, she is super creative and um, she loves to draw and one day she saw me that I was a little bit nervous by a topic and she she held my hand and she said, mommy, can you please come in my room? Um, I want to show you something. So listen, you are sitting now on my chair. We organized for her like um, a space where she has um, uh, colors and uh, paper that she can paint or draw. Mm -hmm. And she said, all the time when I'm sad, I'm taking my space and I'm painting or writing down what I feel in that moment and I feel you are a little bit nervous today so <laughs> take this time and just paint or do something what you feel you, you are doing and I was like oh that's my so god impressive. <laughs> she's yes. eight yes she's eight wow. she's eight and um yeah she's uh, she's such a creative person and um and very em empathetic, empathetic super super yeah. empathetic 
I, I believe um, uh, empathy is the most important thing in, in this in this life for all of us. If we will all be a little bit empathic from the moment when we are driving, you know, I'm all the time thinking when I'm driving and I see maybe a nervous driver or I see um, a driver who wants to come from another street. I'm all the time thinking, first of all, maybe he really has an emergency compared with me during that time. And second, if I let him to go, <laughs> mm -hmm. he will do some to some others he will let to go to some others and i really kind of give that and um i think empathy just to understand trying to understand the the other person you know it's interesting because i spoke about empathy with james another guest uh, of my podcast and mm -hmm. um he actually has a TED talk about that and um he believed as well that empathy can really change the world um but i was really surprised um, when I start to speak more and more about that, and not so many people know and understand actually what is empathy. And um, this is something that I would love to see as a topic present in our school that we are learning since we are little, you know, like as well as we are learning how to breathe, how to breathe when we are stressed. Why I have to learn that when I'm uh, on my, um, how you say, late 30s. <laughs> late 30s. <laughs> Um, Very elegant way to let us know your age, more or less. I, I, honestly, I don't have any problem with my age. I'm really grateful every single day that I have one more year and I learn so much. So um, I really don't. I really don't have this problem. Um, and um, yeah, I would love to see this more present in our in our education. And I realize even this with my daughter, and it's really painful because um, I think. Um, of course, I don't know all the schools in Switzerland, but uh, in uh, Julia's ca uh, case, um, she's going to a public school and um, it's really amazing, but it's so much about fitting in the box in most of the cases, at least in this school, let's mm -hmm. don't generalize. Um, and I would love to really uh, give more uh, chances to people that, to kids that they have some other um, qualities and as well learning how to deal with because the reality is mathematic we will not need it in the next years so much anymore we will have computers that they will solve a big part of it and we learned for so many years so much mathematics that i mean okay you need the base but what about mindfulness how to deal with stress how to breath how to breathe all this topic how to be kind with the person um, mm -hmm. close to you Imagine, Leia, if we Social will have skills. this. Yeah. If we will have so exactly. If we will have this, how much this planet will change? Being kind with the nature, take care of this nature, protect it. I mean, why we don't do that anyway? I'm, it's part of my list to-do list, and I'm really <laughs> start to have some meetings here um, with some people that uh, I hope that they can guide me um, in a direction that. We need to do a change, and you know, before I lived, um, before I moved to US, I was complaining. One of many things that I learned during my journey um, in um, when I was living in San Francisco is just act. You know, when we had, um, they were like really terrible fires in San Francisco. The thing is, everyone, no matter what they were doing, everyone they were thinking how they can support, how they can do it. One can really give toilet paper, another one can give just orange because they cannot do more. Others, the restaurants, they were cooking for, for the people that they didn't have. Um, just where supporting to, each other. Supporting each other. And this has to really come from somewhere. And hopefully even the school, of course, the family is so important, but we don't have this so much. So I'm, I'm still believing in a, a perfect world. So you're ready and to I'm take action. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. working on it, but you I'm know. I, ch I want to change um, myself and around me. And I know that I have a big responsibility as a mother. Um, uh, explain this to my daughter, but um, if I can do a little bit more and I, yeah, I will be happy to change a little bit in my area. You're doing great with taking action and not just having ideas, but also putting them into action mm -hmm. and um, you spoke a bit about yes change and the future and the outlook of what the society could become if, mm -hmm. it would be helpful if people are nicer kinder and yes. that kids learn that earlier on um, if we cycle back to the podcast speaking about the future of the podcast because i know through 
your episodes you actually change people's lives too mm. so what is your wish for the podcast where will it go first of all i'm super super grateful for um knowing that there are people that they are taking their time to listen my interviews with different people and they trust in my selection of the guests and in my my questions and i'm really happy to receive uh, messages of people that they are really healing through it, through that and i really have um i really even became friends with some of my listeners that i never met before but um i actually really need support in um learning what what do we need and uh, i am asking okay what what other topic you would like to have and i'm really trying to be as much as possible engage on my instagram as well to really understand what is the need if we speak about the future um i don't have like a big goal i'm learning to enjoy the journey more than really i all the time had the goals and i forgot to enjoy the journey but if i speak like a very a uh, short future obviously um the podcast will develop more and more um i will have uh, the video part um you very soon you can find me on youtube with um the cooking part as well because food is one of the most important topic for me and obviously through food we can heal and um I have more than 200 cooking books so I have to somehow what, what? Explain. how many cooking books 200 <laughs> ah, no, did you read terrible. them all Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm still collecting like all the time. <laughs> Whatever I'm going, it's crazy. Even the last time when I went, I went just for a weekend in Como and I came back. This is my shopping, a cooking book. <laughs> so yeah, definitely um, I will develop. Um, I already record some of them and they will be very soon on YouTube. And um, I'm really learning to be better and better in what I'm doing now. Uh, through the podcast and um, I'm learning even to accept the industry that I, I was part of it for more than 20 years to embrace it to not deny it at the beginning when I decided to um, close my company because I really felt uh, my values are not the same aligned with that and um, everything was completely I don't know I started to really actually have serious seriously um, health problems again the importance of knowing who you are because I was really running in the wrong direction until one day when I really honestly um, was um, in the moment that uh, they thought that I have cancer so that was the moment when I did a biopsy and um, they um, told me I have to do this biopsy I was not prepared for it so that was the moment when I realized I cannot go like that and I had to read take the decision of closing and take my time and take my space and basically kind of killing my baby because this was my first baby um, and um, I really think um, another future it's about embracing that at the end of the day I'm part of it I don't know maybe I'm back with some new projects uh, maybe not um, but related um, to fashion you mean related to fashion exactly yeah. um, but doing it authentic and super related with um who am i because i have to say i was doing fast fashion and as much as i was producing in europe and as much as i was trying to control i did so many mistakes even copying styles for example copying was such a such a broad learning um for me even if i do something wrong Um, I want to do it on my own and I want to take my own decision in, in that. And um, yeah, a lot of learnings that now I'm really happy to take it and to move on and learn. So I'm actually really open for what is coming. I'm enjoying the present. I'm working on the podcast and I really hope that um, you guys that you are listening now, you, are, um, you will enjoy more and more what's coming on. Um, and uh, going more into video part because I love it. And you look great on, on video, on camera. <laughs> so <laughs> we have you. something to enjoy. <laughs> Not only your beautiful voice, but also your beautiful face. So that's Thank something you. to look forward to. And I'm excited to see like what project uh, actually you will start and, and uh, yes, launch. No. Because I know you're always creating and you want to 
get things done. So that's that's so exciting. And you know, I I'm learning to really again let go of things. You know, like and I I'm sure that many of us we are like everything has to happen now. And even being an entrepreneur, you really have to do everything fast and now. And to really prove that impossible, it's possible. Um, um, so I'm learning to really take it like that. And I believe that when you are in that flow, you know. Um, my, one of my first months when I was uh, when I moved to San Francisco, um, I was lucky to participate to an event where Oprah spoke, and um, I really resonate with one part that she really mentioned. And she said that uh, we all have a mission on this life, and when we align our soul with that mission, no one can stop us of doing it. No one. And I really. Um, so I believe so much in that and I know that uh, for some of us the journey of figure out what is that mission um, with a lot of patience mm-hmm. patience, patience. patience. Um, I believe that in that moment when you find it nothing can stop you and the same with this project I, I'm really going into the flow I know this is something that makes me happy that is the moment when you feel that you start to go in the flow in my point yeah. of view And I spoke with a very dear friend of mine recently and she told me, when I think about food, for example, I really like, you are so in love of cooking and you are all the time cooking um, fast, but in the same time you are doing food that it's healing. Why you don't do something like this? A few days after that, I was Mm -hmm. on uh, my journey in Bucharest, not planning at all to do that. Everything came in such a natural way that I just, did that project with uh, this friend of mine. I was like, that's so crazy because I was, normally I was, sometimes you can plan everything so perfect on the minute, but actually it's not happening. So I really believe in the divine time. Mm -hmm. I think I just, it's not easy, um, but you just have to let go and trust. Everything is happening with a reason and it's all the time a good reason, even if it's painful on that time. And in the right time, it will happen in the divine time, as you said. Totally. So I I want to ask you a bit more about the food, because you mentioned it a few times. You're a food enthusiast um, and you said food can be healing. But what else do you love about food? Why is this such an important part of your life? Food and water. I didn't (laughs) see you drinking water. Very important. Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) Guys, don't forget to drink water. So the ones that they are listening now, I recommend to take the glass and drink take some water. It's very important <laughs> to hydrate. Food for me, it's um, it's um, it's about bringing people together. It's about creating. And I realize that when I start to bake, because when you are <laughs> baking, you all the time have to respect perfectly the quantities and the steps. And if you don't, it's it's terrible <laughs> and I tried it many times I really give a lot of chances but I'm just creative and I love to create new dishes I love to combine different um, flavors mm-hmm. so it's uh, that space when I create that space when I bring people together and you know that because I love to just have brunches or dinners where I have all my friends and maybe the friends of their friends and that we just have beautiful discussions obviously about food as well I think this is coming even from my origins because Romanians are very similar with Italians. Not so many people know about it, but uh, even the language is super similar. And we speak about food. When we are planning to have a meeting, business meeting, for us, (laughs) the most important thing is where we are meeting because there we have to eat something good. (laughs) So it's everything about food. But as well, yeah, but as well for me, it's a healing as well, because um, I was cooking all the time with my father, all the time, every evening, I will not forget, he was calling me and even if we were um, not living in the same country, he said, okay, what should I cook this evening? Or what are you cooking this evening? Or let's cooking together. And uh, when I have moments when I'm sad, um, like my daughter is painting, I'm cooking. Um, And... um, I'm sad or I miss him, I'm, I start to cook and I feel so good after that. And uh, that's actually, so it's, yeah, it's something really healing for me. And I really hope that um, one of my dream, if I can speak about it, if it will happen, if it's meant to be, is to really 
uh, once have a cooking book with, with the dishes that I was um, cooking with him. Change them a little bit in more healthy style, style because part of the Romanian food is not necessarily so uh, light and <laughs> faster to cook because some it could take hours. Um, but I would love to really do this cooking book and to really mention even the learnings from him. And um, yeah, I would love to do that uh, and to dedicate it to him and to everyone who they see food a healing, a healing journey. That's that's so beautiful. Thank you, Leo. So um, just to recapture it a bit. So you're a food enthusiast. You have over 200 cooking books. Uh, <laughs> you own a very successful fashion brand, fashion label. You're doing a podcast. Uh, you're a mother, a wife. Um, you lived in at least three countries. So uh, I would like to play a little game with you where we learn even more about you in a shorter frame of time. So you can always choose uh, what you like better and maybe give a short explanation why you like it better. So for starting, um, what do you like better, running a fashion label or hosting a podcast? <laughs> um, oh. Obviously a podcast, but um, as I mentioned before, I don't want to renegade uh, the part that I belonged for so many years. So um, doing a podcast about fashion or people that uh, they healed in, in the fashion industry, if I can say that, yeah, would that's be a, a, perfect mix. a good idea. And actually big part of the people that I um, interview interviewed are actually part or were part of fashion industry and uh, of course i'm i understanding and i'm attracted by it. so i think i will i will do this mix of it that's that's a very smart uh, solution <laughs> um do you like cats or donkeys better come on Leo, this is a tough <laughs> one i mean i obviously everyone who knows me knows that i love donkeys mm -hmm. i have a cat i have a black cat not a donkey um, no because uh, i'm still negotiating with my husband he's not so happy <laughs> having a donkey even though actually i received a donkey on my birthday I, we adopted a donkey on my birthday a few oh, years ago yes. but it was quite difficult to bring him with us to san francisco and to all our travelings but yeah <laughs> i i adore donkeys since i'm little i adore them i think they are the funniest animals ever they are having this um Beautiful. Most of them, they have this cruise. I don't know how many of you guys know about it, but they have a cruise on the back um, due to the whole religion story. And I think they are hilarious. When I was going to, zoo, to the zoo, when I was little, I just wanted to go. I was running directly to the, to the donkeys. And if I meet a donkey, please, I mean, it's the most terrible. I sing with them, I hug them, I kiss them. I, I adore them, I adore them. That's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm sure they love you back, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, the last one, I did a photo shooting with a donkey uh, recently. And, you know, donkeys, and this is one of the reasons that I love them, they are really stubborn and they do what they love to do. This guy, he was, <laughs> listen to me, like crazy. I said, okay, now you look to the camera. And now you, I was like, oh my God, what is happening? <sighs> he likes me. <laughs> Karina, the donkey whisperer. Yeah, exactly. Oh, All right, them. let's let's continue. Uh, movies or books? Um, I love both. Especially, I love Friday evening to really watch uh, a, a serial with uh, with uh, with my husband. It's really cozy that time. But uh, if I have to really choose one, I would definitely choose books because I feel it stays much more um, to me and. Uh, yeah, I love I love that. I love to really read the book and I'm really all the time carrying with me different books each time, <laughs> discover new ones that um, I'm learning from it. Mm, this might be a, a tough or an easy one. Mm. I don't know. Beach That's or it. mountains? No, it's not. It's not. It's not at all. I love to going to the beach. And actually, <laughs> this is a funny story. My husband, he's from Switzerland obviously from the mountains and uh, i remember <laughs> I, um, I i'm not a big fan of skiing i'm doing it because i have to face my fear of skiing because i was not doing it when i was little because it was an expensive sport so my parents they couldn't afford to do that um, but i remember one of my first dates with the, my husband uh, I was carrying my skis and having all these heavy clothes and cold and 
oh my god and i was like why you have to be born in the mountains why <laughs> why you are not born in an, on an island somewhere where is sun and where is the beach and where is the sea <laughs> but i feel super connected by with the ocean or with the sea so moving to the next question i have for you is what do you like better dancing or yoga I like both and if I have to choose, you know, I am a yoga teacher and I actually took this class to become, I decided to become um, a yoga teacher just because I, I felt it's part of my healing journey and I really can take this time for myself and I really love it. Um, I really recommend to everyone who they really need to squeeze more from themselves and to really be in that beautiful space to really give a try. Um, and I remember that uh, one day I had to really teach in front of uh, my colleagues. It was one of my first time teaching and um, it was after six hours of um, teor theory where we were sitting and I really felt we have to just shake and we have to move our body and we have to dance. I found an amazing song um, and uh, for the 10 minutes we were just dancing and imagine that we are like trees and we are just moving and shaking and um, I combined these two parts and um, I, um, I got really beautiful feedbacks after that. So I would say both. <laughs> dancing and yoga. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last one is again a food question. So are you more the salty or the sweet type? I love, I love salty. I really, for me, if I, if you give me some French fries, this is the dish that I was cooking a lot with my father, um, with garlic, I, it's enough for me. So yeah, salty, definitely. That I'm was... sorry, Leia, I know you're the other, the opposite. <laughs> I'm, I'm a sweet. Well, I know you love sweets. But also, I like any type of food, basically. It's just, it's great. And if you cook it, even better. <laughs> thank you. As um, well, likewise. Thank you. So, um, attaching to that, uh, one of my questions would be um, to sum it up. If you were a spice, which one would you be? Um, I mean, it's not necessarily a spice, but actually gives a big flavor to most of the dishes uh, when you're cooking it's garlic. I uh, still try to convince my husband, he's on a very good way to enjoy this garlic, but I really believe that it's that flavor that really um, brings the other flavors much stronger when you really use it. I mean, imagine a pasta, even you can make a pasta just with a little bit of olive oil and garlic. Maybe you can put a little bit of parsley, but you, you know, like just garlic gives so much flavor in all the dishes. So yeah, I will be a big garlic. You will be a big flavor. <laughs> big flavor. <laughs> Adding mm. flavor to everyone around you. Mm. I like that. I think it, it describes you well. You are a, <laughs> a nice flavor. So um, actually we're coming towards an end uh, to this interview. I hope it was a, a less um, bad if we can say that or less uncomfortable than you expected i know you were a bit nervous <laughs> i mean with you my dear obviously um i uh, you make me all the time to feel super comfortable and um i was very nervous because um you know it's a big responsibility i mean as much as you know i, I want to be super authentic and I have to be very careful to not play with words because sometimes you can just say some things that maybe you didn't mean it and can really hurt someone. And um, I'm re I was really nervous of making sure that I really um, give the right answer. And actually, I'm doing this all the time when I have an interview before we start, we push the button to record. I'm taking 10 seconds with my guest and I ask them to close our eyes and to really um, ask the universe, ask God to guide us in this conversation that the right um, questions and the right answers are going to exactly what our listeners need in that moment. And um, it's, it's, it's a big responsibility because, you know, I, uh, I really want to, to support and help and uh, yeah. That's, that's the reason that I was a little bit nervous, but yeah. Do you, do you think you brought across the message or the right message that you wanted your listeners 
to here today. Totally. And I think you could really see it and probably even my friends, they could really see it. You know, it's not about being perfect. And I mentioned so many things that I struggled and I'm still struggle. And I think it's so important to really see what are the things that you can um, improve because only like this we have always so yeah i i i believe i mean obviously all the time you can be better <laughs> but there's um, always room yes it's always room but um i'm super honest and super super um vulnerable um and i'm here and i don't want to pretend um i'm someone else and um i really don't do compromises anymore in this it's it's it is who i am and you like me or you don't like me it's not a compromise anymore and you're showing up you're here the way you are yeah exactly so thank you so much for being this vulnerable this authentic and this open um i enjoyed this interview a lot so thank you so much for having me and i'm sure your listeners also enjoy to get to know you even better Thank you so much, Leah. It was really uh, beautiful speaking with you and creating this uh, trustful space. I know you are doing this. You did this for so many years um, as a radio moderator, presenter. And um, <laughs> more than that, you are you are a dear friend of mine that uh, really helps me and support me in uh, so many different points. And I want to thank you for accepting my invitation and no, uh, for pleasure. creating this space. You're Thank amazing. You uh, well, You're really amazing. likewise, I think um, like-minded people always find themselves. And I must say, it was one of my favorite interviews, actually, even though 10 years of radio. Um, really? Yeah. Because I know that you interviewed really like... Yeah, but I mean... Politicians and sportives and... Yes, but it's always about... Um, even if it's more about the person, it still is it's more work related you know they have to give the interview or maybe they want to have a political message across or right. whatnot or so i really enjoyed this because it was more about emotions and ev evolving and and also the maybe not so easy things to talk about so i i really thank you for that it was really nice i'm happy to hear that that's a yeah. compliment for me thank you leia that's amazing well, continue do what you do. When you, the next time you are on this side again, when you can ask the questions, maybe, um, yeah, you have a, a new insight of being on totally. on, on the guest seat. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it. I totally agree. The things will be even better because um, I did that. Um, I did this exercise. It's really helping me so much. And thank you so much for everyone that they are listening now. I'm really, as I mentioned before, I'm super grateful for. You know, time is the most precious and uh, I'm super grateful that you, my friends, that they are listening now, all my friends um, are taking time to really listen to my story and I really hope that um, could really take a nugget of wisdom or two <laughs> and um, to really make this world more beautiful together, honestly, together. I cannot do it alone, you cannot do it alone. We have to do it together and we have to, each of us, do a change. What can we change now? What can you change now that you are listening? I think this is a good question, a good homework for all of us. Definitely, another easy one, but we can start with a small step that we can change. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Deal. Yeah.